All right, here's another example of a proof. So again, I have it set up as the proofs will always be set up with the premises listed first, and then to the right of the last premise, I have the conclusion that we're trying to derive, right? So this is what we're trying to get on the last line of our proof. Um, uh, and here we see uh, is a B. Um, well, uh, how can I get that? Well, it's not clear yet, but if I had a not A, then I could use a disjunctive syllogism. Remember what that is. Here's a disjunctive syllogism. If I had um, a not A, then I could derive B, but I don't have not A. So <clears throat> in this case, the strategy, what I would suggest doing is looking to the um, uh, simple atomic or um, atomic negated statements uh, in your premises um, and see how I can plug those in. Um, and in this case, not D, uh, I would plug into uh, this second premise here, right? So here's a conditional statement, if C, then D. And I have another premise that says not D, and you should know if you've been practicing, um, what I can derive from lines 2 and 4. Not C. And I have to cite the rule that I used to derive that, which is modus tollens. And the lines that I've derived uh, this new statement from, that was lines 2 and 4. So modus tollens on lines 2 and 4 allows me to drive, not C. All right, so um, now I'm going to, again, apply that same strategy, which is I've just derived a line, uh, not C, and so I'm going to see what I can do with that. Um, and you should see that the third premise, line 3 here, is a conditional statement whose... Uh, last whose consequent is a C and I've just derived not C so you should see that I can do the same thing again namely uh, I can derive not A by modus tollens oops undo that modus tollens on lines this time it's 3 and 5 Um, okay, again, I'm trying to get B, and I started out saying, well, if I had not A, I could do a disjunctive syllogism uh, with line 1 to derive the conclusion B. But now I do have not A. I've derived it, right? So, if you look at lines 1 and 6, you should see a disjunctive syllogism. Um, and that will allow me to derive B by disjunctive syllogism. I'm going to abbreviate disjunctive syllogism DS and what lines? Lines 1 and 6 and that completes my proof. Um, I'm going to uh, back up here uh, really quickly and show you that there's more than one way to do a proof. Okay, So back, re I reset here. Um, <clears throat> there's another rule called a hypothetical syllogism and that one if you recall, looks like this. Here's a the form of a hypothetical syllogism. It's called a chain argument, and you can see why. If P then Q, if Q then R, therefore if P then R. Um, let me show you really quickly another way of doing this proof. On lines 2 and 3, I can do a hypothetical syllogism to infer if A, then D. If A, then D. And again, that was a hypothetical syllogism on lines 2 and 3. Um, now I'm going to use uh, do a modus tollens on lines 4 and 5 to get not A. Again, that was modus tollens on lines 4 and 5. And then finally I'm going to derive B by disjunctive syllogism again. 